How are we doing? We're fine. Good. Okay, first of all, I'd just like to say uh, good evening to everyone. I look around the crowd, I feel like I'm at home, so it's no stage fright up here. Um, but this is real informal, kind of open it up to questions and answers. And as far as uh, the 84 team uh, getting together, uh, just like to thank the university for acknowledging uh, a team of 40 years ago. Uh, Jim Masters and I were sitting out on the court watching the young kids uh, recently. And uh, it's hard to believe uh, we were 18-year-old kids and in the same spot they were. But uh, Kentucky basketball is special, and for them to acknowledge uh, old men like us, we appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Sam was a senior that year, was uh, All-American, of course, uh, set the stage for a, a long NBA career. So we'll uh, throw it open for questions. Uh, this time, just go ahead. Yep. Sam, just a, the, one, the, the dinner or reception last night, what was that like? I assume there were some, some good stories probably told. Some stories I would not be able to repeat. Um, but no, uh, when you get our age, all we can do is sit around and reminisce. And uh, um, the brotherhood that we had back then, uh, I think that had a lot to do with the success that we had in 84. Uh, no Eagles were involved. Guys didn't worry about stats. And, uh, but the stories last night, uh, some hilarious, some sad, obviously, uh, God bless uh, Coach Hall, uh, Brett Barrett, Melvin Turpin. Uh, so uh, it went uh, from here to there, and uh, but it was a beautiful evening. Sam, I think people probably, when you came back healthy, expected you to put up crazy numbers, and yet you were more of a facilitator. No. Talk about how that that's, that's a good point. I was just uh, telling somebody, uh, 30 minutes ago that I was the second pick in the draft and I only averaged 10 points a game. I was talking to Coach O. We were out on the floor and I was trying to tell him that these kids got to realize that if you do what you're supposed to do, you can do this thing for a living and get compensated at it. But I took the fourth most shots on that team. I averaged 10 points a game. and uh, But we as a group uh, had a lot of success. So, uh, But that's a good point. You don't have to go out and put up 30 points to be uh, noticed. Jim and I, prior to walking to this uh, press conference here, just said how the game has really changed. Uh, everyone shoots threes. You have a three-on-one break. Instead of running to the blocks and getting a layup, everybody spots up for a three. Um, the talent, uh, obviously, is, uh, is, uh, has been taught to the point where uh, you cannot just be a straight-up postman. Uh, so the game uh, has gotten to the point where someone like me, I have to try and figure out what I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question in the back. The three bigs we have, um, I'm just glad I'm not on the roster because I wouldn't get any minutes. <laughs> uh, these guys, uh, to see the progress, and I hear that uh, Big Z's back tonight, so. Um, we need rim protectors. We need guys to get the ball off the glass and start our transition because I think Cal's team is built where transition basketball is to our advantage. Uh, so I'm excited to uh, see what our bigs look like tonight. But I think uh, come March Madness, uh, I'm a joker when I say this, if we don't win it this year, it's Cal's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's going to be the lead story tonight. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure, John. Yeah, Sam, you guys obviously didn't win a national championship, but it seems like the fans still revere your team as championship talent. Why do you think that is? That's an interesting question because I feel like walking around here in the Commonwealth that they think I'm still on the roster. Um, but. The fact that we did come up short and did not get a chance to put another uh, national championship banner up there, 
All through my pro career, every time I saw Patrick Ewing, I used to tell him he's walking around with my ring because not you, Patrick, or anybody can tell me that we were not the best team in the country. We just happened to come up and have a half the way we did in Seattle. But I think the people are thinking like Mr. Bowie that we still were the national champions. <laughs> so. Yeah, and for me, I had set out two years. So I was really uh, looking forward to contributing, and I felt like I had let the university down by not being able to play. But uh, we as a team, I'm sure Jim feels the same way, we're very confident. We uh, you know, ranked top five in the country throughout the year, and we just felt as though um, there's a lot of things that a team had to do on that particular night for us to come up short. So uh, we weren't cocky, we weren't conceited, but we were very confident. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I felt that with Coach Hall too. Uh, he, there was a lot of pressure on him, as everyone knows. And, uh, but uh, we were a very confident team. Yeah, without a doubt, uh, senior year, when you come through the hoop, uh, the memories, the emotions, um, knowing that it's coming to a close, uh, all the relationships and uh, all the uh, love that we had as a unit. Uh, a lot of times the general public, they, they just see the ball thrown up and the game begins, but there's so many people that make it happen. And I knew after being here for five years, that that was coming to a close. So uh, my last game here uh, will um, stick out above. I was blessed to play on the, make the 1980 Olympic team and played double digits in the NBA. But Kentucky, my last uh, game in Rupp Arena by far. Jim Masters turn. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're very welcome. Good to get Jim up on the Jim up on the stage. Uh, Yeah, I'm better at questions usually, but uh, Sam was great. Uh, Sam should have passed the ball to me a little bit more my senior year, I thought. And Melvin, too, but God bless Melvin. God bless Brett Barrett. So uh, a lot of special times. Uh, being acknowledged as we all get older, everyone out here, your careers, uh, you get older, you reflect. So I truly am thankful to the university and first class what they've done for us the last couple nights and keeping us updated. And, uh, my son's here, so my wife, uh, they, they're not used to this as much. So my wife's from Cincinnati, and it's all good. So we've enjoyed it. A lot of great memories. Uh, seeing all the guys, not all of them can make it, but just seeing them, a lot of fun for me. And uh, it's a camaraderie. It's uh, like a fraternity back then. Also, being a, as you get older, being a very small part of an unbelievable tradition in Kentucky basketball, you get more and more pride of that's what I did. So uh, a lot of pride, a lot of great friends, a lot of great memories, a couple bad ones, but uh, 
all in all, it's been beautiful, I think, for all of us and for our families to come back. Beautiful. Well, if you're asking, does it ever go away, I would say no. Uh, but again, we actually accomplished a lot in my four years. We won three SEC championships. We came in second, I think, in the other one. There you go. And we, we went to, my, my teams went to two Elite Eights. Uh, we went to a Final Four. So we accomplished a lot. We were basically rated top five almost all the to played North Carolina up in the Meadowlands one a day after Christmas so a lot of great memories just that we didn't quite get to the finish line on a couple of them but we had great careers and uh, I think we have a, a lot more great memories than we do a couple of tough ones but that was a tough one yeah. How many points did you have scored with that if Bowie and Turpin would have passed more a lot more uh, here is a reflection I I, I don't really think I cared that much for a while about the three-pointer, and you know, people would ask me. But the older I get and the more games I watch, it's a little tough to watch. It's like, wow. Uh, Sam said it, the game has changed so much to the better, I think. So outside shooting, I think the shot clock was the best invention ever. NCAA should have gone to that way before. But the three-pointer, I think it's, it's exciting. It's fun. My son, I coach now the eighth-grade team at Sayre, and none of them really take two-pointers. I hope you get the joke. You guys can take a two-point. You don't have to be out the three-point line at eighth grade. So it really has changed the game, I think, for, for the better. And yes, I reflect on that once in a while when I see these games. Hi, Dick. Yeah. As I told Sam, uh, just sitting out there, and, and uh, you know, we played it. Sam played in the pros. I got drafted. I've been around great players, Michael Jordan, a lot in my career. It's amazing. I know you guys come to all the games to see how big and strong, even to my son, I said, Leo, it's impressive to me. The young men walk by and you're like, whoa. So extremely talented. Uh, transition, that was a word used on Sam. Transition game, wow. We even talked about, which I'm sure Coach Cal, and the rest of his staff do every day. How are we going to get enough playing time for some of these guys? They all have showed, I might be thinking of one that maybe hasn't yet, but all of them have showed wow to me. Uh, so that's what they, they coach. That's what they get paid for. That's what they talk about. But I'm sure getting playing time, getting the right guys in there at the right time. So big deal, but wow, talented. And then Z comes back tonight. Really? I mean, wow. So, uh, Generous still mentioned why. Yeah. Like How many times through the years have you been asked about the Eagles outside? I'm going to take the last question first. A lot. And I love it, okay? But that brings up another bad memory because bittersweet, that's one of my favorite words for that game. Uh, I'm, I had a great game. I had a great game before. Our team was right there without Sam Bowie, without Sam Bowie. And a lot of pride there how we really came together at the end of the year. But if there was a three-pointer, okay, thank you. So I was really shooting well at that time, that whole season, if you follow. But it, anyway, so a lot, Dick, and it's a beautiful thing. My son or my wife, beautiful thing. So. Great question on uh, my donation. So uh, there's really about six reasons. One, I've had good fortune and, and good luck. Uh, I talked to Mitch about a year ago. Uh, even better things have happened to me during this time. So I was thinking about it, Dick, for a while. And then I thought about education and all this. And, and uh, so, I live here, I played here, I'm part of a crazy tradition, small part. I graduated in four years, business, 
proud of that. My brother Randy went to uh, business school there. So the education part, the athletic part, uh, I'm a big Mitch Barnhart fan for not only what he does on the court, but what he does off the court. My son, he didn't like basketball until last year, so. So that's fun. He's into it. We live here, I said, all those things. And I thought it was time to do something, how small it is. I hope it helps the university not only athletically, I hope it helps shows all young men or women that you don't have to be a first round back draft pick, you don't have to be a first round baseball player, football, you can still be successful in life with a degree from Kentucky and be a student athlete and move on and do good things. I hope that does something for the university, I hope it does something for other people, and I'm proud to do it. Yes. <sighs> wow. So I coached my eighth grade team, if I didn't tell you. And I, my Reed Shepard's always the best. And what a fabulous player. And sometimes people say fundamentals as a negative, meaning he's not, he, his fundamentals are, I'm not a great coach like Coach Calipari, his fundamentals are crazy. And he's a crazy player. I mean, he's good, athletic and everything. So he's special. Also what makes him, I think, special and Coach Calipari and his staff, I tell my young son and the kids on my team, it, it really doesn't matter if you start. It matters how much you play and how you play when you're in the game. And all those boys all look at him and say, who's always in the game with five minutes to go if it's a close game? Reed Shepard. All these young men are talented. That's what we were talking about are so many good players, but I'm so impressed with Reed Shepard, but more, not only of his fundamentals, how he conducts himself, he doesn't start, but he plays a lot, and when he plays his minutes, he plays them well. So, good question. Yes? Did you not see the tapes? Or something? <laughs> what advice would you give this team on that defensive end of the team? Well, first of all, I'd give this team no advice. As your first thing was pretty accurate when I you know, wasn't the greatest defensive player ever. But people had to have offense too out there. But I don't think, well, they need no advice from me. They're so talented. And another thing, I know we're in, what are we in, late January? Yeah, yeah. I think their competitiveness has gotten way better on that end. I'm not, I would not be worried about that at all. I'm sure Coach Calipari and his staff, it's, they're probably all on them, but they look like they have the competitive fire when they get going. I, I still think there's a, the road's very long for them to continue to improve. So much quickness. Wow. Wow. Now, that is a good question, because he actually was one of the great shooters, great shooting big men. I, I really mean this of all time. He could shoot it. Well, back in those days, I'd say he could shoot it like a guard. Now all of them can shoot it like a guard. But I think he would have, he probably would have stretched out there. You're right. So maybe I wouldn't have got as many threes as I thought. So, yes, he could do it. He was a shooter. I think Melvin was even a little better, just so you know. Sam was way better at other things. Melvin wouldn't pass the ball at all. Does anybody believe really, at all? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, again, I uh, told Brett's, Brett's son is here and Brett's brother is here, and that's very nice. Tom Heights kind of helped out with getting that. And, you know, come on, guys, we're all getting older and gals. You, you think of things. And so there's some days I'll tell my son, you know, you don't want to do something. Well, seriously, I mean this as a compliment and a beautiful thing. Brett Barrett doesn't have a decision. You can get out of bed and go to school, okay? So I think about those things. And uh, Brett Barrett and I were very close. He helped recruit me, and I was telling his son, 
crazy stories about recruiting me, but very bright guy. He would send me creative packages in the mail. They might blow up. They might sing happy birthday. They might have UK, because he wanted me to come to UK. I don't know if it worked, but we had a lot of really serious fun times. He was a very, very bright guy. Any other questions? Any up to Jim? Not Jim, again, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. All right.